With the weather turning colder, I'm yet again finding myself wanting to dive into some indoor winter gardening projects. Over the years, I've iterated quite a few times on various pump and valve concepts for the hydroponic side of these projects, but while I've got quite a few variations of pumps that work well for me, my attempts at valves have generally had some shortcomings that left me less than fully satisfied. But with my latest swing at tackling my valving needs, I think I've got myself a keeper, or rather, a collection of keepers. The new design concept allows me to fairly easily scale the number of channels, and so far I've made 3-channel, 6-channel, and 8-channel versions. But why do I need all these multi-channel valves? Well, experimenting with indoor farming or vertical farming or whatever you want to call it has been a personal favorite random topic to tinker on for me over the years, and one aspect I've been playing around with recently is a variation on the hydroponics side. My goal is a system able to give specific dosages of different nutrients to each plant in the system without having to use a whole bunch of separate pumps. So I'll have the water and nutrients coming into the pump through one set of valves and going out to the plants through another set. For the last couple of these test setups I've built, I've been playing around with some cam-operated valve ideas, the first of which was this guy here. It's a six-channel valve for each one of those channels has a bit of flexible tubing that passes through a flexure that can either pinch the valve closed when undeformed or deflect out of the way and let the flow go through. And to control the movement of those flexures, it uses this camshaft design that's very much modeled off of an automotive camshaft. The valve is normally closed, and then when the cam lobe engages the flexure, it opens up that channel. But in initial testing, the valves didn't consistently give a great seal, and the assembly was a bit bigger than I'd like, so I decided to stick with the general cam-operated concept, but with quite a few changes. And that brought me to this cam valve Gen 2 concept. Instead of the automotive style camshaft operating flexure valves, I went with this drum cam, as I refer to it, that actuates steel balls that press against the tubing to pinch it closed. The tubing itself provides the preload of the balls against the cam, and these dimples in the drum allow the balls to move and open up the channels one at a time. The stack of steel balls provides some decoupling between the rotating drum and stationary tube to reduce friction, but the spherical contact at the pinch point also resulted in challenges in ensuring a good seal. I was able to get these valves to work just fine for my purposes for some test setups, but I wasn't entirely satisfied with them. So recently, when I decided I wanted to build a new test setup for growing some peppers this winter, it seemed like a good excuse to revisit the topic. And that brings us back to the collection of valves I showed earlier. In my testing thus far, these have provided consistently good sealing across all the valves, and overall I'm really happy with them. The only thing I think is less than ideal with them is they could probably be a bit smaller. But my current build isn't particularly size constrained, so it's good enough for my needs. So let's take a closer look at how they work, and how they go together. To improve the sealing issues from the previous version, I went back to flexure-based pinch valves similar to Gen 1, but instead of arranging those flexures axially along a camshaft with one lobe per flexure, I instead arranged them all radially around a single, large cam lobe. This configuration also had the benefit of making it more straightforward to add in some rolling element bearings, so I didn't have the sliding friction that caused version 1 to require some additional drive torque and would have likely shortened the lifespan of the cam. Looking from the side, it's a bit easier to see how the changing diameter of the cam profile drives the motion of the flexure. The stiffness of the flexure, combined with the stiffness of the tubing, preload the roller against the cam. For all three of the sizes I've made so far, the flexure valves are the same design. All that needs to be changed to vary the channel count is the main mount and the size of the cam wheel. Each of the flexures gets passed through these openings in the main mount and secured with a couple of M4 fasteners. Then roller bearing gets attached with another M4 on the moving part of each flexure. The cam sits on a couple of larger diameter bearings, one seated in the center of the main mount and the other held within these retainer frames that attach to the front of the main mounts. For the three channel version, I even had some fun with it and had the fine folks over at PCBWay cook me up one printed in aluminum. Overkill strength for the application, but it sure does look cool and feel sturdy. To drive the motion of the cam, I integrated these clover coupling features into the drive side, and for now I'm using these 270 degree RC servos to drive them. I say for now, because unfortunately that 270 degree range of motion means that one of the valves on both these 6 and 8 channel versions aren't accessible, so I may upgrade this to something like a stepper in the future if I want to get the full use out of it. But I went ahead and assembled the full sets of valves because, you know, symmetry. The servo then gets attached to these mount brackets on either side that then get mounted to the main mount of the valve. This configuration will allow me to swap out the servos for something different fairly easily by just making up alternative motor mounts. With all the parts attached, the only thing left to do is thread tubing through these openings in the flexure valves, and it's ready to go. The flexures and cam are designed to give around 6 millimeters, or about a quarter of an inch, of travel, but I intended it for use for 3 16 inch or 5 millimeter silicone tubing, so I'm intentionally compressing the tubing beyond what should be needed, and that's to ensure a good seal across all the valves. The base of the flexure, combined with the extra support from the opening in the main mount, is intended to provide some compliance to allow for this extra motion without breaking anything. 
And I think that pretty much covers it for my latest attempt at Valve building. I'll include links to the design files, part files, and all that fun stuff below. And a huge thanks to PCBWay for helping me out with a number of parts on this one. For my builds, they provided all those nice looking gray flexor valves from FDM, the yellow cam made with SLA, and that great looking aluminum printed retainer. If you'd like to have them print up some valve parts for you, I'll include a link to that down below too. And if you have any questions or suggestions, let me hear them. Thanks for watching, and hope you're building something fun.